what evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to real thrills, the shadow is in a class by himself. And when it comes to real tire safety on wet, slippery roads, you can't beat the non-skid action of the new Silvertown Lifesaver Tread. You know what your windshield wiper does to your windshield. Well, that's what the good, rich Lifesaver Tread does to rain-drenched roads. Its never-ending spiral bars act like a battery of windshield wipers, sweep the water right and left, force it out through the deep, Silvertown drainage groove. Make a dry track under your car for the rubber to grip. And don't forget, this skid-protected Goodrich Silvertown is the only tire that gives you the famous golden ply protection against high-speed blowout. Why gamble on tires when you can get this double protection with Silvertowns at no extra cost? The shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Cranston is known to the underworld as the shadow. Never seen, only heard, his true identity is known only to his constant friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The Caverns of Death. visitors who come here to the caverns believe that the underground chamber which we're about to enter is one of the most magnificent of nature's wonders. Hey, this is pretty impressive, isn't hey, it? Hey, I'll say. Hey, gosh, take a look at the section we're entering now. It's as big as all outdoors. We've named this great natural hall the Temple of Vulcan after the Roman god of fire because of the pit that you see over there near the center from which vapors continually pour. Oh, hey, that is oh, yeah, it. Hey, I think your class will find this the most interesting part of the caverns, Professor Morley. Is it safe for me to bring my students any closer to the pit? Are the vapors harmless? Sure, sure, it's just steam. Hey, come on, fellas, let's take a look at it. Yeah, come on, fellas. Hey, Eddie, come with me. Now, mind you, boys, stop too close. Oh, it's all right, Professor Morley. There's a railing around the pit. Now, this great circular crater, approximately 100 feet in diameter, is truly one of the natural masterpieces of the entire southwest. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the base of this pit is a pool of water which is believed to be bottomless. Bottomless. Oh, yeah. The steam which you see rising before you is emitted from clefts in the rocky wall about 15 feet below the brim. These may be seen by leaning slightly over the railing and looking downward. Yeah. Can you see him, Eddie? No, not yet. So Look, lean over here. See, see him? Oh, yeah. Hey. Look down there. Hey. Hello. Hey, look out! The rail's breaking! We're falling into the pit! Hurry. Please, hurry. We're doing everything we can, Professor Moore. Oh, this is horrible. Horrible. My entire class, 17 fine young men, are down at the bottom of that pit. I don't know whether they're alive or dead. Now, take it easy. There's still hope. There ain't no, no bodies come up yet. Oh, but the rescue party's been down there for over an hour. There ought to be some word. Well, it takes a long time to drag the pool, you know. Oh, here comes one of the rescue squad now. Hey, Harry, what's happened down there? Yes, yes, what's the news? Well, we dragged the pool up, down, and over again. Yes. There wasn't one single body to be found. <laughs> Please tell me if that's the plane from the east. Yes. Thank you. How do you do, Miss Lane? Oh, Professor Morley, I, I'm so sorry. I heard about the dreadful thing that happened yesterday. I can't tell you how badly I feel. Oh, it's horrible. Inconceivable. I still can't believe it's true. Has there been any further word of the boys? No. 
None of them found. Not even their bodies. That, that's what makes it so horrible. I can't understand and it. It's all my fault. I should never have taken them to the caverns. You mustn't blame yourself, Professor. You couldn't foresee the danger. How am I going to face the parents of those poor boys? Oh, I know. It, it's sad for everyone. Uh, some of the parents are arriving on this plane that's just landed. Will you excuse me? I must meet them. Certainly, Professor. I'm expecting a friend on this plane myself. Uh, good, uh, good day, Miss Lane. Good day. Oh, Margot. Lamont. Oh, Lamont. How are you, Margot? I'm disgustingly healthy. Must be this mountain air. It's so nice to see you. Oh, I'm glad you were able to come out. I, I know you'll just love the club. I'm sure that. By the way, I read in this morning's paper about an accident in the cabin. What's the latest on it? Not a thing. I, I was talking to Professor Morley just before you arrived. Oh, he was the man in charge of the class. Yeah. Have they found any trace of the boys yet? None. Hmm. Well, here's the car. Get in. Will you drive? Certainly. Follow the road to the left. It leads straight to the club. Uh, the cabins on the same road. Yes, they are. Why did you ask? I, I thought we might stop and take a look at them. Lamont, what's your purpose in stopping? I know you too well to think it's morbid curiosity. There are several things about this accident that I should like to understand more fully. Well, what things, Lamont? I wonder if anyone has taken the trouble to find out exactly how those young men fell into the pit. Well, yes, of course. The railing broke and the rim of the crater gave way. But isn't that rim solid rock? Yes, I think so. How strange that it collapsed, don't you think? Well, I hadn't thought of that. Even more important, why hasn't any trace of those young men been found? Well, they're supposed to have fallen into a bottomless pool. A strange pool that refuses to give up its dead. There must be something mysterious about that pit, Margot, and when we reach the caverns, I intend to find out what it is. <laughs> shouldn't be taking you in here. These caverns were officially closed after the accident. Then nothing has been discovered yet? No, ma'am. There was a party down there about an hour ago. They didn't find a thing. Yes, but here we are. This is the pit. I see. That must be the place where the rim gave way. Mm. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Took off very evenly, didn't it? Yes. Rocks do that sometimes. Mind if I examine it? Well, you can't go near there. That's orders. Very well. Tell me, how did the searching party get into the pit? Rope ladder. Over on the other side. Is the bottom of the pit entirely covered by the pool? There's a wide ledge on one side. That's why the searching party went down over there. Wait for me up here, Margot. Where are you going? To the bottom of the pit. That's pretty risky, going down there alone. Oh, but he's not going alone. Well, I'm not going with him. I know I am. But, Margot... You, I'm going with you, Lamont. Well, if you've made up your mind, I know better than to argue with you. Here's the ladder. What about these vapors, guys? Are they very hot? No, after you're down 20 feet, you'll be past them anyhow. Now, here we go. I'll lead the way. Careful when you start, Margot. These rope ladders are tricky. Keep going, Lamont. I'm right behind you. I'll be a lot happier when you pass through these vapors. Yes, it's very... Oh! What's the matter? I almost slipped. You haven't, Margot. Be careful. Yes, I will. There. We'll be on the vapors. How far is it to the bottom? I'll use my flashlight. Hmm. Out of the way now. The ledge is directly below us. The voice is down strange down here. Hollow. Like a tomb. That's, that's what it is, Margot. There. On the ledge. Easy now. Thank you, down. Thank you. Now watch your steps. These rocks are slippery. I know. That's how everything feels down here. I mean cold. Take a look around. Stay close. Hold my hand. All right, Lamont. There's the pool. It looks so black and sinister. Yes, it's easy to believe that it's bottomless. Now we'll start in this direction and circle the pool. All right. Awfully dark down here. Lamont. Did you hear that? Yes, yes, I did. What was it? Don't know. It seems to be coming from the pool on our right. Who's Turn there? A flashlight on it. No one answers. Look, Lamont. Someone's clinging to the edge of the pool. Come on, Margot. Lamont, you suppose it could be one of the. We'll see. Take the light, Margot. I'll help him out of the water. Give it to me. All right, old man. Come on. There you are. Lamont! It is one of the students. I know it is. I, I've seen him around the village. Okay. I've got to get out. I've got to get out. Take it easy. Take it easy. We'll get you out. Oh. What about the others? Are they alive? You understand me? Are they alive? The railing's breaking. We're falling. Help! Help! No, you, he's too delirious. He's a very sick boy. Get him out of there quickly. I'll call the guy. Hello? Hello, sir. What do you want? Find one of the students alive. You lower a rope. Do it, he. Here he comes. Good. Listen, Margot, while I... Hide this on his arm. Oh. Lamont, where did he come from? And what are the others? I don't know. And it's well, it's better perhaps you can tell us there. All right, Bob. All the way. Show me now. That's it. Don't let him swing against the wall. Hand him all right. Sure, it's easy. Got to 
right out of here and rush that boy to the hospital. Oh, he must be almost in the top by now. Look out! Look out below! The rope is breaking! Stand back, Margo! Oh! Just a rocket. I'm afraid there isn't much we can do. But Mark, is it? He's, he's dead. How oh, dreadful. Why did that rope break? That rope did not break, Margo. See? It was cut. Cut? Yes. Someone up there was afraid of what this boy might say. Now I'm sure, Margo, that this is a case for the shadow. Well, you see, boss, all the time I'm hauling the boy up and thinking what'll happen if he talks. So then I cut the rope. Good work, Brunson. What about the couple that were down in the pit? It came right up. They never caught on to what had happened. You might have cut the ladder on them, Brunson, just to make sure. Yeah, I never thought of that. Who is it? It's me, the cop. Hand me that gas mask, Brunson. You must never see my face. Sure. Here you are, boss. All right, let him in. Well, what do you want? Well, I'd like to ask a question of you, if it's all right. What is it? Well, I was wondering how much longer you was going to keep me here. Aren't you satisfied? Well, I'll tell you. I'm sort of be sick of being held here like a prisoner or something. I'd kind of like to see my family. You better make up your mind that you're going to stay here in the guide's quarters just as long as we need you. But, boss, You'll I... be better off if you keep your mouth shut and tend to your work. Okay. But I'm telling you, I don't know much, how much longer I'm going to be able to take it. And that kind of talk. Never mind him, Brunson. Put on your gas mask. We're going into the cabin. All right, boss. I want to find out how that boy reached the bottom of the pit. I don't know where they keep me here like this. They're afraid I know something. They're afraid I'll tell. What have you to tell? Who said that? There's no use looking for me. You cannot see me. Who are you? I am called the Shadow. Well, what do you want with me? I heard your conversation with the two men that just left. What are they afraid that you will tell? Nothing. Nothing. Come now, you've no reason to fear me. If you'll give me the information I seek, I may be able to help you get away from here. Oh, I'm only the cook here, I tell you. I don't know nothing. Who is the man in the gas mask? Well, he's the boss. That's all I know. I never seen his face. Why does he wear the mask? Well, they always wear masks when they go to the lower level of the cabin. Lower level? There's more to the cabins than the public is viewed. Sure, that's where the... Hey, I told you I don't know nothing. You must realize that you will never leave this place alive unless I help you. And you help me. Well, maybe, maybe you're right. You know I am. Now, what about those boys? Are they alive or dead? I don't know. But when they fell, it wasn't no accident. Somewhere in the wall of that pit, there's a sea... <laughs> I know you shouldn't have go. He's dead. Yes. And that, Mr. Shadow, is all that you're going to hear. I presume that you are the man they call the boss. That's right, Shadow. We're meeting on equal terms. Although I can't see you, I too am hidden, safe behind this wall. What happened to those boys? That's my affair, Shadow. And I advise you to keep out of it. That dead man on the floor is proof that I mean business. I regard that as a challenge. From now on, it is war between us. I promise to save those young men and bring you and your gang to justice. Ladies and gentlemen, relax for just a moment while I give you this brief safety reminder. Vacation time is playtime, when worries are left behind, and you head your car for the wide open spaces, when safety is a must. The shadow knows. Drive carefully, obey the traffic laws, and for safety's sake, don't throw your family wide open to skid and blow out dangers by riding on tires that have seen their best days. Speaking of tire safety, I'd like you to hear one or two of the many compliments that Goodrich has received from people who have switched to the new Goodrich Silvertown tire. One motorist says, I've driven a car for 17 years, but I've never seen a tire that will stop faster than the new Silvertown. Another comment from a mother of four children. 
I used to be afraid of wet weather driving, but that new Silvertown Lifesaver tread gives me a new feeling of security. Isn't that the kind of tire that you want on your car? A tire that will turn the wet road under your car into a dry track. A tire that will stop you quicker than you've ever stopped before. A tire that gives you golden ply protection against high-speed blowouts. Yes, for safety's sake, ride on Goodrich Safety Silvertown. Give me your hand, Margo. Help you down with the lid. Thanks, Margo. Are you sure no one saw us entering this pit? Well, we'd be known about these cabins this hour of the night, but that's as, as quiet as possible. What is it you expect to find here, Margo? Well, from what the cook told me before he was murdered, somewhere in the wall of this crater, there's a secret entrance to the lower level of the cabin. Do you think that the boys' bodies are in there? Yes. Yes, I do. What probably happened is this. The rim of this pit was deliberately undermined. And they were dropped into the cavern. And, and from the cavern, they were taken through the secret door? Exactly. Now, Margot, take your flashlight carefully along that wall. Mm. I'll search this side. Any of these projecting rocks may conceal the entrance. Lamont, what do you suppose is behind all this? Uh, we won't know until we get beyond these walls. Look, Lamont. What's this? This crack. It runs completely around the rock. Oh, it does. Do you suppose it's the door? I'll try to see. Lamont, it's moving. I'll give you a hand. Thanks. It's opening easily now. There we are. There. It's wide enough to let us through. Come on. Look. It's a regular labyrinth in here. Yes. There are passages in all directions. Margo, we must search these caves and tunnels. I think they'll give us a clue to the complete disappearance of the students. Wouldn't we save time if, if we each searched a separate car? No, no, no. It'd be better for you to remain here at the entrance of the pit. And you can guide me back by the sound of your voice. Very well. I'll follow this passage first. You can call to me once in a while so that I won't go too far. All right. Well, the corridor seems to be growing narrower. I think... Can you hear me, Margo? Yes! I've reached a bend in the passageway. I have a feeling this doesn't lead anywhere. You still hear me? Well, thank you. You better come back. Oh, Margo! Margo, what's the matter? Margo! Margo, where are you? Where are you? What do you think we should do with her, boss? For the present, we'll lock her in the vault. Wouldn't she be safer out of the way? We'll send her that later. You can't leave me locked in this awful place. In with you. No. no. Lock the door, Bronson. What about the man that was with her? We'll get him now. We'll start looking for the girl and get lost. Pick him up in one of the corridors. Come on. Margot. Come on. Get here. Yes. I'm just outside the door of the vault. It's a shadow. He's gone to look for you. I know. One of them was the guard, and the other was the man they call the boss. Did they harm you? No. But if they find you, I think they intend to kill us both. We won't give them that opportunity. Get you out of here at once. We may meet them in the corridor. Not if we proceed carefully. Walk straight down the passageway. Stay close to the wall. I'll be right beside you. Did you discover anything? No. No, I've been too concerned with finding you. As soon as you're out of here, I must act quickly. He's standing going very far, boy. Quick. I find this rock, Margo. Don't move. Can't waste much more time looking for him. Yeah. He'll never find his way out. Well, let him go for now. There's something more important to attend to than the mine. All right, Margo. He's gone. This corridor leads up directly out of doors. Follow it. You'll come out within a hundred yards of the car. Aren't you coming with me? No, I must follow them. Didn't you hear them speak about a mine? Yes. That may be our clue to the whereabouts of the missing boys. Do be careful, Lamont. These men are dangerous. They'd stop at nothing. There's something I want you to do, Margot. As soon as you reach the village, communicate with the police and bring them back here. I may need their help. All right. 
Goodbye, Lamont. Good luck. <laughs> loose down here. You know, there's always a chance. He'll have to risk that possibility. Is the foreman still on duty in the mine? Sure. Remember you told me to keep him working all night? Yes. I want to have a talk with him. I'd still like to know how he'll explain that boy's escape. He claims he didn't even see him go. That excuse doesn't satisfy me. Well, there we are at the mine. Put on your gas, man. Okay. Hello, boss. Hello, Bronson. What luck you've been having, Captain. Here's a couple we dug out about an hour ago. Let me see them. Boy, they'll be beautiful rubies when they're cut. Yes, yes. And I think that no one but us knows such magnificent gems can be found. I've had a hard time keeping the students from dropping in their tracks. You know, they've been working steady for 18 hours. And they must keep on working. This is the last night. Hurry them up. Well, they're working as fast as they can. After all, if we took our masks off and breathed the gas in this mine for a while, we'd be slowed up, too. I think I can wake them up. Hand me that whip. Oh, no, boss. Don't hit the boys. They're half dead now. Hand me that whip. Now, look a little lively. Come on. Dig in there, you. Oh, oh why don't you stop? That ain't you. The boss knows what he's doing. You're here to work. Get up. Come on, get out. Oh, stop it, stop it. I, I can't watch this anymore. Go and solve, Peggy. Maybe I am. Yeah. Well, this is a good time to ask you how that boy escaped to the pit. Did you let him go? No, but that's a good idea. I'd like to let them all go. We treated these poor students worse than the lowest animals. We got them breathing this gas, which destroys their willpower. We're working them like slaves, day and night. I'm not going on with it. We're murdering them. Can't you see? This is murder. You're right, Gaffney. It is murder. That's exactly what I plan to do when I'm through using them. No, no, you won't. Don't forget, I know who you really are. If I should tell... Tell, would you? <laughs> You'll never tell. <laughs> You'll never have the chance. You'll die right here with the others. Do you hear? You're going to die. He's unconscious, boss. Shall I finish him off? No. No, not yet. You can still use it. When he comes to, take off his gas mask and put him to work for the others. Good. Let me look at those rubies again. Yeah. Here you are. After tonight's work, we'll have enough of these priceless gems to live in luxury for the rest of our lives. Yeah. After tonight, you live in the penitentiary for the rest of your life. Who's that? So it's you, Shadow. Yes. I finally caught up with you, Mr. Boss. Who is he? Where is he? He hides in the shadows. He's too cowardly to show himself. A man with your record of treachery and murder should never mention cowardice. <laughs> what do you expect to gain, Shadow, by meddling with my affairs? I'm here in the interest of justice. I demand the release of those young men. Oh, <laughs> You're ridiculous. I'm not bluffing. Does he think we're going to give up all we've been working for? If he does, he's mistaken. Just how do you think you can stop us, Shadow? I've dealt with men like you before. I have my own methods. The police are on their way here now. When they arrive, I promise to deliver you into their hands. Very confident, aren't you? I am. There are a few details that you've overlooked, Shadow. This chamber is filled with a gas that destroys the willpower. In a few minutes, you will feel its effects, and we will be able to see you. I feel its effects. <laughs> but before the gas destroys my will and my willpower, permitting you to see me, I shall have settled my score with you. Neither you nor the police shall ever lay their hands on me. And why not? You see the match I'm holding in my hand? No, boss, don't. Put that match away. You may not know that this gas with which this mine is filled is also highly explosive. If I strike this match, these caverns will be blown to kingdom come. And blow yourself up with it? If I am pressed far enough, yes, that's just what I'll do. I... 
I advise you to put that match away. Oh, no. I am holding a revolver which is aimed at your head. You make one move to strike a light, I'll fire. <laughs> that, that seems to amuse you. You must think I'm pretty stupid. You know as well as I do that a pistol shot would ignite this gas as quickly as my match. Yes, yeah. I guess that stops you. Have you anything to say? Maybe the gas has got him. Maybe we'll see him. Yes, yes, we can. <laughs> Let go of me. I'll just relieve you of those matches. What's the matter, boss? Shadow. Took the matches. What? Now, now I demand that you open that door and let those young men out. Oh, no. Come on, Bronson. We're leaving here. Look out, boss. Look out behind you. It's Gaffney. He's come too. He's got a pickaxe. <laughs> you had that coming to you. I told you, Bronson. No, no. Keep away from me, Gaffney. Put down that axe. Don't. Don't. Uh, that settled my score with you, Bronson. And you too, Professor Morley. Professor Morley? You mean... Yeah. That's who the boss really is. I see. That ties in with the disappearance of those boys. How did all this come about? Morley discovered this mine a year ago. He and Bronson planned the kidnapping of those boys. They had to get labor secretly, or the owners of the cabins would have found out about the ruby. I see. I've hated my part in this thing from the beginning. And now that it's over, I'm not sorry I killed them both. Yours has been a crime of violence, Gaffney. But the law will be lenient. They deserve to die. And now, open that door. And we'll lead these young men out of their living death into freedom and life. You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow Magazine, now on sale at your local newsstand. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental.